Hey there everyone, it's Michael and during this video I'll share with you my thoughts on Fidogia agrestis as a nootropic supplement that can help to improve your testosterone levels. And something that specifically made Fidogia agrestis get a lot of attention lately was its mentioning on a podcast between Joe Rogan and Andrew Huberman. Andrew Huberman was asked about um, supplements that could actually improve testosterone levels while being relatively safe. And the only two supplements that Andrew had mentioned were Tonkat Ali and of course, Fidogia agrestis. And another one which is very interesting, it's a Nigerian shrub called Fidogia agrestis. And so those two herbal supplements together can give a significant boost in free and active testosterone. During this video, we're gonna talk about what is it. We're gonna talk about the benefits, the side effects, what the ideal dosage is and how specifically you can start taking it and whether or not you really should be taking it. And if you do get value from this video, then consider subscribing and let's jump right into it. Fidogia agrestis is a Nigerian shrub and the category of supplements it would fall under would be um, supplements that would improve testosterone levels. If you've ever heard me talk about yohimbine, which is also something very powerful at boosting libido, yohimbine is as well found in Fidogia agrestis. And what I like about it is that it is naturally occurring. Guys, it's not man-made which doesn't necessarily mean it's safe. What you need to understand about Fidogia agrestis, and the unfortunate thing is that there are basically no studies done on humans. The only research that we have is, of course, studies done on rats or studies done on other animals. But fortunately, there are some anecdotes you can read about as well. If you browse online, people reporting that they feel uh, more intensity at the gym, they feel increased aggression. Some people have mentioned that their sleep is better and the blood work shown afterwards of using Fidogia did actually show like a 200% increase. However, these individuals probably had lower testosterone levels, which is why they did see a benefit. I have tried a number of natural testosterone boosting supplements over the years because I did actually have an experience when I had low testosterone levels. So I'm probably like you and like looking for absolutely anything that can help me to improve my testosterone levels because more testosterone means better sleep, better energy levels, more muscle mass and less fat and all that good stuff. It's been my experience in taking natural testosterone supplements that they seem to kind of work if you have lower testosterone levels, but if you're somebody with like mid-range or higher testosterone levels, then you probably won't notice much of these supplements uh, doing anything. So for those of you What's really neat about it is along with the benefit of boosting your libido, there's actually some other really good benefits that people do not take into consideration. There's benefits with respect to um, clearing up your skin. There's antioxidant benefits. There's anti-aging benefits. Um, there's the odd couple of experiences you can read about in which people have said that it lifted their depression. Maybe not necessarily by doing anything to change their neurotransmitters, but maybe it was the fact that, you know, boosting your testosterone levels is going to, of course, improve your mood and that can uh, act as an antidepressant in itself. So who is this supplement appropriate for? Maybe somebody who's experiencing low testosterone levels, maybe somebody who's just coming off of a cycle, or maybe somebody who is like, considering you know taking testosterone but they would rather still do their best to keep it somewhat natural then of course this is a better alternative than getting on a cycle as you know and what i like about fidogia agrestis is that it's not something that you should be taking every single day for a long period of time common uh, ways of taking it are two weeks on two weeks off and repeat but of course we don't know about the side effects and we don't know about the long-term harm that it can cause because something which has made this supplement very controversial is the few studies that show the potential toxicity and dangerous side effects with taking Fidogia agrestis, which I'll point out here. The study over here demonstrated that uh, kidney damage was associated to taking higher doses of Fidogia agrestis. And then here's something somewhat concerning is that in a follow-up study, this was done in 2008, what they um, had found after giving Fidogia agrestis to rats for over the course of about a month, the rat testicles measured larger, although they may have been less healthy. And then what so is there were increases in certain enzymes and a reduction in proteins that actually indicate possible toxic damage, which in theory may result in decreased fertility. But it's safe to say that if you're looking to you know, boost your testosterone in a natural way, I would recommend you look into taking other supplements over Fidogia agrestis. However, this may have some neat uses uh, to taking it. Uh, like I mentioned, I really like that you don't need to take it for a long time. You could just really take it when you need to. This is from the 2005 study that was done on rats. On the x-axis, we have day one, three, and five. And on the y-axis, we have the serum testosterone concentration levels. So we can 
see the four groups. There was the control group, there was the group taking 18 milligrams per kilogram of body weight, the group taking 50 milligrams per kilogram of body weight, and the group that was taking 100 milligrams. And as expected on day five, the group that was taking 100 milligrams per kilogram of body weight showed the highest increase. But take a look at this. If you look at the red bar specifically, the group that was taking 18 milligrams per kilogram of body weight, on day three, there was an increase. However, on day five, there was actually a decrease. And similarly, what the researchers had found was this group showed only transient toxicity, whereas the other groups, so the groups that were taking 50 milligrams per kilogram and 100 milligrams per kilogram of body weight, they actually found that uh, Fadogia agrestis was highly toxic to the testicles. So what this is telling us is that more is not better. If we were to take it maybe uh, in lower amounts, perhaps, then it could be such that we could improve our testosterone levels while not of course being susceptible to the bad risks out there like infertility. So there's again so much research to still be done. I can say that I am somewhat comfortable taking Fidoji Agrestis. I'm going to give it a shot and I can let you know how it goes for me. Now let's talk about how to take it and what the right dosage is. So what you need to know is that the pill is commonly going to be sold in 600 milligram capsules. Uh, 450 milligrams is also pretty common. The recommended dosage that you'll most commonly hear about is a dosage similar to that rat control group of 18 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. And this is kilogram of body weight, not kilogram of lean mass. So I would prefer you take a much more conservative approach and take something like 50 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. So a 175 pound individual would in that context be taking about 1200 milligrams of Fidogia agrestis. But start off very small, start off conservatively. I would recommend you go ahead and just take 600 milligrams, you can even break the capsule in half and take 300 milligrams once per day. See how you respond to it. The great thing about Fidogia agrestis is that you should likely still feel it working in very small amounts. And then you don't have to have the uh, potential concern about the side effects and the long-term risks. Like a nice practical way of taking it is just taking 600 milligrams for a couple of weeks, seeing if you notice a good benefit and then taking a couple of weeks off of it. Or maybe you can use it like, you know, uh, prior to an event, let's say if you really want to lose weight or you really want to get in shape or you have some sort of need to boost your testosterone levels, heck, maybe even mood, because I know that taking substances that do improve your testosterone levels very often will really improve your mood, your self-confidence, and even help with sleep. It won't matter whether you take it in the morning, in the evening, or whether you were to take it fasted or with a meal. Don't um, expect it to have any sort of different benefit that way. Just take it in a way in which is convenient for you to take and a way in which you can take it consistently. For example, if it works that you take it pre-workout, then I would suggest you stick to taking it pre-workout. At least you're getting it in and you're not missing the dose. So you can, um, at the end of your cycle, then be objective about it and determine whether or not you should continue taking it. And if you were to ask about other nootropic supplements that may go along with it well, there are none I can really think of that would have a nice synergy to it. Just ensure you're taking a multivitamin. You have a great diet that's filled with micronutrients. You're of course exercising. And if you want to take other supplements to as well, improve your testosterone levels, then you can consider taking ZMA, which I've talked about in this video over here. That's zinc, magnesium, and vitamin B6. And a couple other ones that I really like are Tribulus and I mentioned Tonkat Alley. And I really hope you found this information helpful. I don't recommend this particular supplement. I don't think it's safe, but but I don't as well think that it's as bad as people are making it to be. And for that reason, I'm going to give it a shot and I'll let you guys know how it goes. And I'll look forward to seeing you all next time. Don't forget to click subscribe and drop a like. And thank you for your interest in nootropics.